what's good we're back in this thing today boys i got the absolute sauce i know i said in my last two videos but this effect is actually out of here i haven't seen anyone do it the way i'm doing it and there's just so many infinite possibilities and i'll be showing you guys how to come up with completely unique effects based off what i'm doing if you're new here what's good my name is brian i make music video tutorials here on youtube I do sometimes vlog stuff but if you're not subscribed go ahead and do that because i upload three times a week we're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year the community is growing so fast. We just have a dope community on Discord, YouTube, Instagram, all this stuff. So go down in the description, follow me on Instagram, join the Discord, say what's up. There's always people in there editing, doing that stuff, and it's just really cool to see you guys come together. If you want to level up your music video editing game and support the channel at the same time, you can go over to my website, briandelmata.com, and check out my packs and presets. Basically, really high quality digital products that I've created myself, spending a lot of time so you guys can save time while editing as well as get some really cool effects. It's the best way to support the channel and it's really appreciated. But yeah, let's just hop straight into this video and break down this effect. All right, so in the last video, I talked about content aware fill and kind of how to manipulate your clip and remove something from the clip. But there's also other ways to kind of almost texture map your footage and other things to a subject using that same concept pretty much. You just have to tweak a few things. So if you haven't seen the last video, I'd suggest go watch that before this one. You don't really have to, but it is cool and you kind of understand what's going on here. And here I'll show you a few effects. So basically we got this one where the background kind of slides and maps onto Travis Scott here. It's really, really cool. I think this is one of my favorite ones. It looks just kind of like crazy, almost like Borderlands-ish. This one's really cool. It's just like an image of Travis Scott mapped onto him with some noise and some motion blur. I think it looks really cool. It's just like a cartoon kind of look. This one's really cool. It's basically the same thing. I made his teeth bigger and just added a bunch of eyes. It's really trippy and there's really infinite possibilities you can do with this. So if you wanna learn how to do any of these or how to make your own version and kind of do something crazy, follow along the tutorial and we're gonna show you how to do that. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is find a clip. It doesn't really have to be someone's face, but I think it looks cool on people's faces. So I tried to find a clip and this brought, this came to mind, the Travis Scott Highest in the Room music video. This clip here with the hooks in his mouth showing his teeth. I think it's a really cool clip and we can make something really crazy out of it. So then the next thing, you need to do is after you found your clip, just go up to the Roto Brush tool and just rotoscope out what you kind of want to replace. For us, it doesn't really matter how good the rotoscope is. It's kind of cool if it's a little messed up. Obviously, try to stay on his face and kind of in the spots you're going to be using, but it's really not the biggest deal if it's like messy or screwed up. So what I'm going to do is just go up to preview here and click play and see what it does all the way through. As long as it doesn't mess up like terribly, I'm going to keep it just like this. And then once you've gone through all your frames and rotoscoped it out, you can see it even messes up a lot here. I'm just gonna keep it. It doesn't really matter too much because it's just mapping an image to something. So it's not really gonna give it that big different of a look and it kind of just adds to the trippiness of it. But what you're gonna wanna do is if you masked out what you're trying to replace, you're actually gonna go up to here and go to invert foreground background. And what that's gonna do is now it's going to remove this and keep all the background. And that's exactly what you want. So then once you're done with that, go ahead and click freeze. It's gonna lock in your roto brush and remove, for our case, Travis Scott's face here. So then once it's gone through and frozen all the frames, just go up here and close the layer. And now you can see you have a layer of Travis Scott's face missing basically. Like I said, that is exactly what you want here. So now go over to the right hand side and go to content aware fill. If you don't see that option up here in the right hand side, or if you don't see any of the windows that I'm talking about, you can always go to window up here and then find the one that I'm talking about for our case, content aware, and make sure it's checked. And then once you have that, go to content aware. I'm gonna make the alpha expansion zero. Click surface. It really doesn't matter. You can change, play with all these different settings, surface, object, edge blend, all this stuff. I'm gonna make sure to turn off light, lighting correction so it doesn't get too specific. You kind of just want like a blurry, like weird look. For our case and the footage that I have, surface, zero expansion, and no lighting correction work the best. I think for the most cases, that's probably gonna be the case. It might be different for you. You might wanna play around with object. Edge blend is gonna give you kind of a really blurry look that you're not gonna want most of the time. But feel free to play around with it and see if that's something you want. Then after that, go ahead and click generate fill layer. What that's gonna do is analyze all the clips here and it's gonna replace this black spot with things around the area. So for our case, it should be a little bit of his face and jacket and then some of the sky. So then once it's gone through and generated and analyzed all these clips, you're gonna have something that looks like this, depending on your clip. It looks really cool. It's like it's like it just took something and mapped it to his face, which is a look that I really think is crazy in itself. And if you saw earlier, the effect that I showed, it kind of like wipes in. So I'll show you to do that real quick. It's actually not hard at all. It's just an effect 
called displacement map and then just play around with the settings. I think I did luminance and just keyframed the vertical displacement. So it kind of went together in the middle and then just like went like 10 frames ahead or something and brought it back to zero. And then if you could press U on your keyboard, it'll bring up the keyframe. Shout out to whoever said that in the comments. I always just go down here, but it saves time. And then go ahead and press F9 or right click and go to easy ease on the keyframes just so it's a little smoother. And you can see now it expands out. And obviously there's this black background there. So if you just wanted Travis's face, duplicate the background layer and then remove the rotor brush from that. And now you can see it expands over him. So then for this next effect, what you're going to want is a layer probably with your clip not masked out. So I just went ahead and duplicated the layer again and then deleted the rotor brush. So you see Travis here. And then you're going to want to create a reference frame. That's going to open it up in Photoshop. And this is where you can get some really cool effects. You can tweak around with the dude's face, with anything. You can really put anything on top of here, a bunch of different effects, basically whatever Photoshop has offer, which is basically infinite, you could go ahead and change on Travis and then map it to him. And basically what creating a reference frame is and what that means is whatever you do to this frame, it's gonna try to mimic throughout the whole thing. So say for example, if I were to just go ahead and turn off this top layer here, that way we see Travis's face once we move away from that reference frame. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and make it a little shorter so it doesn't have to render out all the way. But now if I go and generate a fill layer, what you're gonna see is it's actually just gonna try to have that one image of Travis's face throughout the whole thing. And you can see if I play that, it doesn't actually look that weird just because it's from the same scene and everything, but you can tell the difference if you go and turn off the fill layer. You can see that it kind of like, it almost like smooths it out and gives it like a cartoony look. And honestly, I think you wouldn't be able to tell that it was like mapped to him in this case here, but it does give it a different look. And it, it could be something that you want. It almost like smooths out his skin and I don't know, creates a cool look, nothing super crazy, but I uh, just figured I'd show you guys what that generate fill does. So then what you would do is, I know I already created the reference frame, but once you, it's weird, there's like a weird glitch I think with, I don't know if it's with Photoshop or After Effects, but if you create a reference frame and open it up in Photoshop and you move around your cursor, the reference frame isn't gonna work. So make sure once you create that reference frame, you don't move your cursor and you tweak anything in After Effects here. So once you're in After Effects, I'm just gonna use the quick selection tool here and just outline Travis's face and then click Control J and that's just gonna create a duplicate of his face. That way you can now tweak anything on just his face. So you could add noise. I did that in one of them. You could add any of these filters, blur, you know, radial blur, just something something crazy, I don't know. It really, the possibilities are really endless. Honestly, anything you can do in Photoshop, you can do an add-in, you do something like pinch here. Make, you can make like duplicates of his face, almost like infinite clones. As you've seen in like one of my tutorials, you've seen something probably something like this if you've watched my channel. It takes a lot of playing around, but that's what I'm saying. You could really do whatever. And then just click Control S to save the Photoshop layer. Then once you open back up in After Effects, if you still have this layer selected with his face, just make sure to turn that off and you should see this layer of Travis with duplicated faces, and then click Generate Fill. And what that's gonna do is basically, in short, it's gonna take this frame and try to match it to all the other frames. So all the other frames are gonna try to look like this. And you can see, that's what we have. I don't know if that looks cool or not, but it's just something you can do with it, which I think is crazy, actually, that you can do something like that so fast. I'm gonna go ahead and create another reference frame, so turn on that layer so we can see his face, remove that one, and create a reference frame. It's gonna open it back up in Photoshop here. Then again, just outline his face. And then maybe if you wanted to do something like I did with his eyes, you can grab the lasso tool and outline his eye, go to feather, maybe feather a little bit, click control J, and then just duplicate that all the way down. And then you can do it with his other eye. Make sure you're selecting the background layer or his face, click control J. And then again, bring it down. And I made a smile bigger. You can really just tweak it however you want because there's just so many different things you can do with something like this. And then just hold shift and stretch it out. What I did. There you have some weird like alien version of Travis Scott. And then click control S and turn off that layer so the reference frame shows up. And then just again, generate fill. And you can play around with the fill methods now 
they're all going to give you different looks too and the lighting corrections all that stuff so just in this one frame that we made if you play around with the fill methods and the lighting correction that's just going to add another step or another layer of effects that you can do and you can see here we got this weird weird version of travis scott here and maybe we'll do one more just for ideas but i really want you guys to just play around with this and make something your own because there's just so many different things you can actually do. You can even bring in other images. Uh, let's see, I don't really have any images on my computer. Let's just say you wanted for my texture pack, a piece of paper over Travis Scott's face for some weird reason you wanted that. Go ahead and click Control S and then you're gonna turn off the layer and there's Travis Scott paper version. And then you just click generate fill. And then there's Travis Scott texture pack version. Yeah, so you get the idea. You can really do whatever you want with this effect. Uh, there's just so many cool possibilities. You could literally take another photo of Travis Scott and map it to his face. You could take a picture of someone else. You could, I don't know. There's really, I can't like stop thinking of ideas. And that's why I think it's so cool that I'm sharing it with you guys. Cause I want you guys to DM me like effects that you did with this. Cause I'm actually really curious on what you guys can come up with. I really think this is like secret sauce. Not many people are doing so. Get ahead of the curve, start doing this effect, tag me, share, share it in the DMs, whatever. I just, I'm curious to see what you guys come up with. If you have a cool enough effect, maybe I'll make a whole no separate tutorial just on that one. So uh, yeah, go crazy with it. But yeah, guys, if you made it all the way to the end, I really do appreciate you. Thank you so much. You guys have been going absolutely crazy. If you haven't already subscribed, like, comment, do all that YouTube stuff. It takes a second of your day and really helps me as a creator. So that is greatly appreciated. If you want to go above and beyond and support me, you can go to my website, briandalmata.com. Check out my texture pack, my presets and packs. It really helps you level up your editing game as well as save you time. And it's the best way to support me as well. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. Peace.